hi this is my second video on my series of wasted potential games games that are good but could have been very very great with just very little effort so today I'm going to be talking about the last story I don't know how many of you have played this I don't think it actually did that well in the end but um that's probably because it's not that great a game I'm sorry I know loads of people love it but it's not that great a game it could have been a lot better than it was all right so now I'm going to detail exactly why I think that the game was below par and why uh, and what I think they could have done to make the game a lot better. And this is going to go full full spoiler out. In fact, the next scene I'm going to show you is the last boss fight because that relates to a lot of what I'm going to be talking about. So just be warned if you haven't played the game yet, then I highly advise against looking at the rest of it. This series is more get more targeted towards people that have played the game and have seen the potential the game could have had. So um enjoy. So Dagrin, everything we've done together, everything up till now, was it all just so you could obtain the power of the two outsiders? That's right. Coming to Lazulus Island, dealing with Zangarak, the invasion of the Garak continent, everything. It was all for this moment. Though I did make one or two miscalculations. And I suppose you were the one who killed General Astar as well. Yeah, he didn't really fit in with my plans. Dagrun! Why? There was no need to! No need to kill him. I can still remember the day when the Empire's meaningless war came and tore my life apart. The Night Sail. They stood there laughing as they butchered my family. Right in front of my eyes. Dagrin, I know that. But that doesn't mean you... I had to get my revenge. So I searched high and low for any clues. And then I found out who commanded the army that murdered my family. It was a man named Astar. No. He's no different from the rest of them. Those murderers who took everything from us. I used to talk about it. Remember, I said I'd get everything back one day. Right, Zale? And to do that, I need this. Or rather, the unlimited power it holds. Don't you get it? I used you and everyone else as pawns to get my revenge. There's no turning back for me. But I will say one thing, Zay. Looking back on it all. We had some good times. All my life, you've been the one I looked up to. The one who showed me the way! Right, so I'm gonna lead off with that. That's the final boss fight, as you should know. And it is by far the best part of the game I've had. It just it worked very well, it had a great plot, it had great music, had a great boss fight after it, that was 10 times more challenging than the entire rest of the game. But it's the lead up to that that I had the problem with. You hear about Dagrin complaining about the, about the Empire's wars and how they came and took his life away and throughout the game notes because it was a rotten arc and you hear about all these really interesting sounding things yet you get to see none of it the only area of the game you get to explore is Lazarus Island and a couple of other islands you don't get to explore any of the empire proper and see any of these wars or any of this dying earth or any of the stuff that they're talking about that's the cause of all these anguish and, and the root of the events in this entire game uh, and it really feels like an incomplete game because of that. This would probably be the game I'd like to change the most out of the games that I'm going to review in this series. Because honestly, I feel like it's just not done. I feel like I only got to play the last third of what could have been a really great game. Like, we see, we have some very interesting characters, but we know very little about them. Like, they, if they give us a bit of information, 
uh, about Morani and Yorick, about where they came from. But we don't know anything about what happened to them after their childhood. Like Yorick's Big Bang, uh, how, why he has like, a really scarred eye, and where it comes from. And it comes out completely out of nowhere. And I love everything you see the boss fight, the final boss fight. I wouldn't change one thing about that. But that just came out of nowhere. I would have given some mention of that beforehand. Like, um, I don't know, just some kind of off-pro comment that you don't know the true extent of my power. Or maybe not give him a special like all the other characters because he's still holding back. And his special is the Big Bang, which is ridiculously overpowered. Just something like that. And it would be interesting to see how these characters met and all that. And that really could have done, if, could have been done if you had started your story a bit earlier. And had a more overarching plot that brought them to Lazarus Island instead of them just... Instead of it all being Dagon's plan from the start. Like it should all be Dagon's plan from the start. That is great. But I still think we should see what happened before the start, so to speak. Because I don't know about anyone else, but I've seen Dagon's betrayal coming from a mile away. It just seemed very, very obvious. I don't know why. It's just, I, I said straight, straight from the get-go that, okay, that guy is obviously a bad guy. He's obviously killed General Ash, Dyer and all that, like, when that happens. And if we had a scene what um, Dagon was like as a character before he comes to Lazarus Island and he had been a genuinely nice character for a lot longer, then his betrayal would have been a lot more surprising and a lot more entertaining. Um, and he also disappears in the last kind of act of the game when the story really starts picking up when the characters uh, go on their journey, the like, last day of the game, so to speak, when they're going on to fight the group for that and find out all the secrets of the outside and all that when the story really really picks up in the last couple of hours then Dagrin just disappears completely into a final boss fight and it's strange because no character actually comments on that at all no one says hey where's Dagrin? why isn't he fighting with us? I wonder if he's okay no one says anything like that and they really should Dagrin's like their leader and they've been fighting with him all this time and no one kind of notices him disappearing completely out of the plot so what I would have done is, apart from making the game three times longer with area beforehand, uh, I would have made it so Dagrin is with the entire group up until they come to a crossroads near the final dungeon, near the final um, area. Um, which, on the same note, that crossroads is completely pointless. It seems like just an excuse to give Yorick a fighting point as well, on his own. Yeah, well, the party split up there for no real reason because they all en end up in the same place. And you don't even get to fight any normal enemies in uh, Morani, it's just the boss and the other characters join in at the same time. So I would have made it so Dagrin split up from the rest of the party at that point, and you don't see him again. You get to fight Zangarak and all that without him, and then at the very end, he appears and becomes a big bad guy. In terms of what they could be doing before all this happens, there's a lot, as I said before, they can expand upon the other characters in the group and even Zael himself, because I don't really feel like I know Zael that well I didn't really get to like his character I would have liked to see a bit more of his backstory apart from what he's doing right now and there could have been other reasons for them to go to Lazarus apart from just getting a job there there could have been stuff to do with the Empire and um, reasons to go there to find out information more about the Empire and Maybe they can fill the job with knights there in a different way and stuff. And there's a whole lot. And the whole scene with Callista, that could have probably happened in the foreign land as well. And kind of more of a surprise when he goes there. And by the way, like a lot of stuff in that game that was so cliche. Her whole self, I like Callista as a character, but oh my god, that was all so cliche. The whole running into the streets and not wanting to be a princess or a countess or whatever. That was entirely cliche. I'm sorry to say that, but that, I think that could have been a little bit better. So basically I made the game longer with uh, more exploration for a first, about, no, not two thirds of the game, for about another third of the game set in the Empire and exploring this dying world, so to speak, and seeing the Guardians and uh, Empire's Wars and just generally seeing more of the world that the game depicts because the picks are very interesting and I get the feeling big worlds that we don't see a lot of and I feel that's a pretty huge problem to do. Another thing is that Spirit Tiger you see in a lot of artwork. That's like an interesting kind of concept, I suppose, but like it's not really used at all in the entire game. 
you see it like twice in the main story. You fight it at the very start, and then it shows you a cave near the very end. It kind of doesn't do very much at all. It's kind of featuring a lot of artwork, which is a bit strange. One last thing I would say about the story is the boss fight against Jural. Another one of my favorite bits of the game. But um, the lead up to it was really, really strange, really rushed. Like, to play the game, one fight, you're fighting a dragon on top of a Zorak face. And in the next time you're fighting, you're in the middle of the sea fighting Jural on a pirate ship. And before, before that string of cutscenes, Jural's in the prison cell. Really, um, the cutscenes in between, Jural breaking out, meeting Zangorak, getting the pirate ship, all that should really happen kind of in a different time basis leading up to that. It doesn't make sense that it happens really, really quickly like that. And it makes a lot more sense that Jural would have escaped a lot earlier when all the other prisoners were escaping. So um, that's just the last thing I'd say with the plot is just the Jural subplot. Just don't have the cutscenes all together in one big bulk because that makes no sense. And I ranted fully about the plot. I think I'll talk a little bit about the gameplay. Um, as far as the gameplay went, it was it was nice. It had its own particular style. Um, not the greatest gameplay ever, but it wasn't bad, so to speak. The one kind of gripe I have with it is the fact that you're always playing as Zale. Like. This is an RPG, it's not a Zelda game. I'd like to control the other characters just a bit more. I know they had the whole kind of um, control thing that you build up and then order all your guys to attack at once, which I keep in. But I'd also like the option to kind of switch between the characters you want to play as, kind of like how they do in Xenoblade. Because the other, character, the other characters do have interesting abilities and it's nice to play as different characters as well. And they kind of do give a chance to play as each character in the game uh, at some point, except Marania. She doesn't get any chances for Marania. Uh, but you never get to kind of pick which character you want to play, which is I feel a major downside. So you know they have all these cool abilities, and you can see them when you're ordering them what to do, but you can't actually use them and run around with them like if you wanted to, whenever you want, to only these specific points in the game, uh, which is a bit of a letdown. Because, really, it's an RPG, you get a lot, lot of that, which JRPGs is to control a party rather than just a single person. And Zale's abilities really aren't that interesting compared to some of the few, a few of the other ones. Like, his Gale is kind of cool and all that, but I'd, I'd still like to have um, other playable characters to be actually fully playable characters instead of just computer-controlled AIs. Like, imagine how bad it would be if it's only Final Fantasy VII and the only time you got to play is Barrett was during his fight against Dying. Even that's not a good example because they don't really have that kind of specific abilities in 7. I don't know if I'm completely out there. Okay, to sum it all up, um, a longer start up to the game where we get to find out more about the original playable characters. Um, and Zale as well, including that. He had some interesting backstory near the end of the game where he like, kind of went mad and killed all his party members. Because, like, he had trauma with his village and stuff like that. Kind of stuff like that. Seeing the Empire in work and seeing the Dying Earth. And basically the back plot of the game. Let's, let's see it. Show, don't tell. After that, um, a couple of the events move around. Just some of the more um, minor things. Like the positioning of the Jural cutscenes. And uh, having Dagrin with you throughout the final parts of the game. And still keeping him as the final boss. And in terms of gameplay, just um, have it so you can play as other characters in, with option for a portion of the game instead of just always playing as Zale the whole time.